All right, another Sierra hiking season is winding to a close. So I thought I would do a review of a book that is kind of near and dear to me uh, and go into a little background as to why I'm interested in trees of the Sierra. Uh, as somebody that's a native Californian, I've been spending my whole life going up to the mountains. Uh, there's the first thing that comes to mind that reminds me of the Sierra and good times up in the mountains is when you drive up on a summer day and you can smell the ponderosa pines. There's, there's something about the smell in the Sierra and it's the trees. And I kind of favor the gymnosperms, the conifers, they're cooler trees, but the fact it's, it's probably, my personal preference for those is because of, of where they grow. They grow in the Sierra, which I really love. I like all trees, but the conifers are kind of special to me. So uh, a lot of you who watch my channel watch it for the hiking stuff. But uh, the flora and fauna is what I appreciate too when I'm, when I'm hiking. So uh, I came to a point where I wanted to learn more about what was out there. I, I could identify trees pretty well but I didn't know trees like, like as well as I'd like to know them. So I pursued getting to know the trees better. So what happened with me is uh, about 10 years ago, 12 years ago, I had a, a forced career change and uh, I've always been interested in trees. So I went out and I bought this book and it's the best tree book guide to the Sierra. It, it's an awesome, awesome book. So a little more background on how we got to where I am and about the book is doing a lot of hiking. I realized the more I learned about the flora and fauna of the Sierra, there's other benefits to knowing the trees other than just personal interests. You can learn, oh, you, you can actually tell your elevation but just by knowing the trees and what elevations they grow at. Uh, you can learn what plants and animals are abundant around those trees. It's, it's just neat to, it's like if you're a baseball player uh, and, or if you follow baseball and you're into baseball, you're fascinated by every pitch. That's kind of how it is if you get to know the trees of the Sierra. You've just, there's things going on all around you if you just open up your eyes. So try it, check out this book. Uh, the other things you can learn about trees is one of, an important thing is where to pitch your tent during a big storm. There are certain trees you don't want to pitch your tent if it's windy out. And those are the red firs, by the way. Don't, don't camp on one, on, under one of those tents in any weather is probably a good idea. So uh, what's amazing about California is we have all these great extremes. We got the, the tallest tree. We've got the oldest tree, which is the bristle, cake, bristle cone pine. The tallest tree is uh, the redwood up in Humboldt. And the, the, the most massive tree, which is the sequoia in uh, the General Sherman tree in Sequoia National Park. And uh, I kind of create, finished the Sierra Grand Slam uh, by finally getting to visit the oldest tree. You know, a lot of people who fish understand the Sierra Slam, which is to catch all four native species of fish. Actually, I'm not sure if they're all native, but I call it my tree Sierra Slam. I only mentioned three, but we'll throw in a juniper, which is a, or not a, a, a foxtail pines. There's a grove of foxtail pines in the Southern Sierra, which is really, really special if you've been there and you're into trees. So I'll call that, I'll count that as my Sierra Slam of trees. So anyway, this book, I picked it up and I read through a lot of books at the library before settling on this book. And I liked it so much, I went out and bought one immediately. And it's a book I've passed around to people I know that are into trees. And it just, it's readable for everyone. It mentions places that I know that I've been to in the Sierra, so I can relate to it. And it's just, it's actually an entertaining book. A lot of naturalist type books or, or guides are kind of hard to read. Uh, this one, you can tell the passion of the author and uh, just relating to places that I've been to and that I can understand makes it very interesting to me. So I'm gonna read uh, just a paragraph to give you an idea of what it sounds like. 
So you can see the illustrations are amazing for tree ID. This is, if you've watched my tree videos, which not a lot of people do, I get thousands of views on my hiking videos, but my tree videos, which is a big passion of mine, don't get that many views, but give them a chance and get this book and learn more about the trees. Your hiking and backpacking will, it'll add an extra layer of, of enjoyment uh, seeing these trees. So here's his opening chapter on the Sierra Juniper. By the way, this is Ronald M. Lanner is the author of this book. And uh, he's got a whole series of books. This one's Conifers of California. It covers all the conifers in California. And like I said, we, ha we have these extremes that are the tallest, biggest, oldest in the world right here in California. So it's pretty special. So here's this chapter on Sierra Junipers, which is a really awesome tree. They're kind of a, a majestic tree that grows by itself. And depending on the season, they're gnarled. They're just, they, tell, they tell a story. If you just look at these trees, they're, they're amazing. So here's just, I want to show you how as descriptive his, the author's writing is. Uh, this is one of the Sierra Nevada's most striking trees. Many travelers encounter it for the first time in high passes like Tioga Pass, Sonora, and Carson Pass. You know, these are all places we all know if we drive this area as you go over those passes. Here at 7,000 to 10,000 feet, one is amazed to see what first appear to be shrunken giant sequoias clinging to vertical faces of white granite. On closer examination, one notices that the enormously thick but very short cinnamon red trunks support compact, often wind pruned crowns of scaly gray-green juniper fo foliage, liberally peppered with frosty blueberries. A whiff of crushed branchlets and the sight of the little spikes found in all juniper fruits settle this issue. This satisfying tree is indeed a juniper, probably the most spectacular of all its far-flung tribe. I mean, it's, it's, it's good reading. You can pick up this book and read it. It's tree porn. Anyway, to me it is. But uh, I'll show you some pictures of the, the illustrations. Uh, it's just extremely well written. Uh, it's something to do in the rainy days. I mean, every tree has uh, just great illustrations so you can uh, identify the trees. Uh, you know, what I, what's a good thing to do is buy this book and then just Xerox off a few pages for the species that you might encounter. Uh, and some of these trees only grow in very isolated areas. I brought up the foxtail pines, which there's only, a, uh, they only grow in two places, in Southern California, or in the Southern Sierra and very Northern California and Oregon. And they're two distinct species. It's just, it's just fascinating. I, I came across these trees uh, many years ago, hiking over Cottonwood Pass, and I didn't know what they were. I go, well, look at these weird trees. They're, they're awesome. Their bark patterns were awesome. They had purple cones. They, they're called foxtails because their needles stay on. And it's like, I got to figure out what these things are. And then you hear the story of why they grow there. And uh, Ronald Lanner uh, does a great job. He has a chapter on those. And it's just a great read of all the... Uh, the book, the guides, the plant guides and the tree guides. This is the best written one I've read. And it inspired me. I read the whole book several times. I take it on hikes with me all the time. It's a little heavy for hikes, but I, I take it on day hikes. It's a pretty, pretty beefy book. But uh, it, I learned a lot from the tree, uh, from this tree book, Conifers of California. And if you've watched my other videos, a lot of the information I, uh, try to pass on not as eloquently as the writer of this book. I use this as a point of reference in pretty much all my tree videos, which are an ongoing thing. I'm, I've got a long way to go. I want to visit the trees personally to do those, those videos. But this is one of my inspirations on a rainy day. Pick it up. It's available on Amazon. And he's got lots of books. Uh, he's got one on the bristlecone pines. He's got another one about the relationship between birds and, uh, and some of the pines that depend on those birds to, to, to exist. There's some very interesting relationships if you're not familiar with those. It's made my hiking funner and much more interesting because, like I said, it's, it's like a baseball game going on in front of you uh, that you didn't even realize was happening. So 
Uh, check it out. It's a great read. And I uh, hope you enjoyed this. And I highly recommend this. Pick it up. It's raining out right now. So go buy this book. Thanks for watching.